Okay, so recently I made a video about the trade of insult arising from followers of various traditional areas or subject of various traditional leaders um, for what I called a battle for either supremacy or everyone trying to tell his or her history. And then I made a comment to the effect that culture alone cannot sustain an economy. And therefore, our various traditional leaders would have to step in and ensure that they have a share in their own resource instead of entrusting all their resources in the hands of uh, a politician. Somebody on YouTube commented that, do I know that Ghana is a federal state? Now, this is a point that I want to add something to it. You see, sometimes we all think, or sometimes there's a whole feeling that nothing can be changed, and the status quo that exists must be allowed to exist till the world comes to an end. When you're using a system where the system struggles to manifest the aspiration of the people, or the system struggles in transforming the lives of the people in the manner they want, there's no point staying with that system. There should be some amendment, if not a total overhaul, overhaul of the system. So if Ghana is a federal state, and then how we've been distributing our resources is not making sense, how we've been distributing our resources is not trickling down to affect the general masses and their well-being especially, then because it's a federal state, we have to just say it's a federal state. What is federal state? Do you understand? Like, the fact that everyone is talking about democracy, and then your version of democracy is not transforming, or is not transformative enough, you would just have to say that I'm sticking with this version of Western democracy because we have no option and that is the best. Till you amend your constitution to a point that the document that governs you makes sense and able, it's able to transform the lives of your people. <laughs> it, it, it is not a system of government. It is just something that is hanging in the air where everybody talks about, hey, democracy, democracy, but the truth of the matter is it is an autocracy in disguise. Recently, the Supreme Court of U.S. passed a, a law that says that the president cannot be held accountable for any decision he takes while in office. And a lot of people are talking about that. I've said countless of time that the kind of democracy we see, which we feel that it is a, it is a rule for the majority or is a rule for the people, it's more or less like... Um, an autocracy in disguise. I'll give, you, I'll give you this example. You see, when we were passing e-levy, you could realize that many Ghanaians did not want e-levy. Of course, citizens don't want additional taxes, so people will want to revolt. But a situation where there are a lot of taxes and then these taxes are not manifesting in the kind of development we expect, it is okay for people to challenge. But a situation where you appoint members of parliament, they go to parliament, and then at that point where a decision is supposed to be made as to whether they would have to represent the highest aspiration of their people or to fall in line with the decision of their party. That is the democracy we are talking about. Of course, you've elected members of parliament thinking that these members of parliament would have to represent the people. But then again, when they go into parliament, there is the party agenda and there is the agenda for the people. When push comes to shows, political parties stay with their party agenda. So how democratic is this democracy that we make it look that there is democracy? The only point that democracy sounds democracy in Africa or in my part of the world is when the people can queue and vote. Actually, the voice of the people or the voice of the masses does not necessarily transform into the highest decision-making. The highest decision-making is made by the interest of the highest political figures. So, it is, it's a bit worrying. People should never think or feel 
that a system cannot change. We don't have to at any point in time. And it is the reason why any time any new political figure shows up or any new leader shows up that he wants to be voted for, it is so difficult for us to drift from the normal political uh, 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 landscape or the environment we know as in MPP and this, it becomes so difficult for people to change the pattern of their vote. And I get it. You would also have to prove to the people that when you get their vote, it is going to guarantee a level of development they want. And then in terms of your organization, and this goes to Cheddar, in terms of your organization and your build-up, the people would have to see that. In terms of your campaign, it would have to go down to the people for them to appreciate your message. So, it is intertwined. I mean, but all I want to say is there is nothing wrong for trying new things. And then it is okay to try new things, of course. You have seen two parties rule the country for about um, 33 plus years, since 1992. And then we've seen manifestation of these two leadership. You still complain about corruption. You still complain about bad road network, you still complain about the basic things which you're expecting these people to do. You still complain about your manufacturing sector. How you want to see it, you're not seeing it. You still complain about your education. After it was moved from three, four years, you still complain. So at the end of the day, what do you really want? Even the things that we say we've done it well, how well have these things been done? So for me personally, I, I, I mean, I don't feel that when you vote for somebody new who you have not been voting for, it's a big deal. It's okay to try somebody new because we've seen what the old people can do. So it's okay as far as his policy makes sense and its relevance in the 21st century economic structure. All right, take care. It's a beautiful Sunday. Um, just wanted to add my voice to what's going on in my country. And then um, I will later come on and then share with you, uh, I will delve deeper into the issue of capitalism and then how our world has been transformed through the Industrial Revolution, just for you to understand economy, how it works, and how best we can develop ours to suit our social context. My name is Kwame Ofer. Take care of yourself. Enjoy your day.